Hi everybody, today's video is very interesting. Today I'm going to talk about the Miller Ore model, which is used for cash management. It's a specific area relating to working capital. It's very much relevant to students doing ACC F9 and CMA, uh, CPA and C as well. So what is Miller Ore model and what it is specifically used for? So let me give you a very, very simple example from which you all will understand what we are going to talk about today. So my question is, do you keep all the cash you have at home or do you keep some cash which you need for day-to-day -day use at home and rest of it you keep it in the bank so yes I can hear you yes okay so you don't keep all the cash at home and that's very right because that's not safe neither it is growing so since we don't keep all the cash at home we keep only the required amount of cash at home and rest we keep it in the bank and then we keep using the cash which we have at home but what happened when the cash which was at home it's almost used up and we are hardly left with any what do we do we go and withdraw from bank so that we have enough money for our day-to-day -day requirements now if you apply the same example on a company do they keep all the cash which they have on hand means in the office the answer is no they only keep cash as much as is required for working capital levels and remaining cash is kept in the bank for example and when that cash is almost used up or when the cash balances goes down what they do is they withdraw from the bank this is a very very simple example so here we need to ask ourselves a question what if cash balances are not managed are not controlled so there is a possibility in the absence of proper cash management either the cash balance which is kept in the office is too high or too low which is either way not very beneficial for the company so what we are going to do is we are going to set limits by limits I mean what should be the maximum balance which we should have at one given point of time and what is the minimum balance we should have and what is the average balances we should maintain so that the cash balances are never too high never too low and that is what is required so guys we have the Miller or model which particularly deals with managing cash levels in a business so here what I have done is uh, some details are given here minimum cash balance it is assumed that uh, the company keeps a minimum cash balance 4000 generally it could be zero also but zero is very very dangerous so normally companies keep cash balance either at zero which is very dangerous or uh, above zero at a minimum safety level the other information which is given here is variance of cash flow daily variance of cash flow so that is 40,000 it is again assumed Standard deviation on a daily basis is 200. That means sometime your cash flow is 40,000, sometime it is 40,200, sometime it is 39,800. That is standard deviation. Transaction cost 20 and interest rate 0 0.001. Now, what is transaction cost? Let me tell you this Miller or Modder assumes that whenever a company has excess cash in the office, what they do is the excess cash is then invested into marketable securities so that we are left with the appropriate amount of cash balance which is necessary once we have that appropriate amount of cash balance we keep using it till we reach the minimum level of cash balance where we feel that this is going to get a little uh, you know dangerous what we do is whatever marketable securities we purchased earlier we sell some of them so that we get cash and the minimum cash balance again goes to an appropriate level which is known as the return point so here we are going to understand using the Miller or model what should be the maximum level of cash what should be the minimum level of cash and what is the appropriate level of cash and how do we arrive at appropriate level so here we have the details minimum cash balance 4000 variance in daily cash flow is 400,000 standard deviation is 200 transaction cost is 20 and interest rate is 0 0.001 by transaction cost we mean that whenever we buy marketable securities or we sell marketable securities there is a cost incurred that is the transaction cost so if you're buying shares of other companies it could be you know the brokerage fee stuff like that 
So, we have some formulas here. The very first is known as spread. Spread is the distance between the upper and the lower limit of cash. And how it is calculated? 3 into 3 fourth into transaction cost into variance of cash flow divided by interest rate to the power one third. We also have return point lower limit plus one third of spread and maximum level lower limit plus spread. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug in the numbers. Once we have these values, you will understand a lot more what these value means and using these values, how can we manage cash balances? So let's plug in the numbers. So what I've done is I've just plugged in the numbers here in the formula for calculating spread. And when I solve this, please remember, first you multiply 20 by 40, divide by the interest rate, okay, multiply by 3 fourth, find one third of that. And in the end, you multiply by three. If you do that, you will get 11,745. The next step is to calculate return point return point which is lower limit plus one third of spread the lower limit is four thousand this is four thousand dollars plus one third of spread which is eleven thousand seven hundred and forty five is seven thousand nine hundred and fifteen the last thing left which is maximum level which is lower limit plus spread, lower limit is 4,000 again, and spread is 11,745, which gives you 15,745. Now we will understand the application of Miller or model. So please pay attention. We have something known as the maximum level, or the upper level. The maximum level is 15,745. We also something known as the lower level. Lower level of cash is 4,000 as per question. Now we got to understand that none of these levels are the desired level of cash. If the cash reaches this level, this is too less, we need to do something. If the cash reaches this level, this is not a desired level, it is too high. We don't want to have too much of cash because there is an opportunity cost. This extra cash can be invested somewhere. So the assumption under Miller or model is, if by any chance the cash balance reached to 15,745, immediately we buy some marketable securities. Because this is an extra amount, we don't want this much, this is undesired. We want an appropriate level of cash balance to be maintained. So if the amount reaches to 15,745, the company immediately invests the surplus amount and purchases some marketable security. So how much of marketable securities to be purchased? Your maximum level is 15,745 and your return point is this much. So you minus the return point from this, 7915. So if you do this, 15,745 minus 7,915, this much of security should be purchased. This much of securities should be purchased. And if you do that, this balance of 15,745 will reach what we call the return point. So this minus this is this, this much of securities will be purchased. So obviously this will be your remaining balance of cash, which is 7915. This is the ideal amount of cash balance to be maintained at any given point. Okay, so we have 7915 and what a company does? Business as usual, operation is on. The company is operating, so obviously cash will be utilized. So when this amount is utilized and if it reaches this balance, which is the minimum balance, again, this is the danger sign. Now, if we have 4,000 cash left, that means this is not the desired amount. This is too less. So what we do, the securities which we have, marketable securities, we sell so that this balance of 4,000 goes back to this. How much to sell? 
we need a balance of 7915 minimum balance is 4 so you minus 4000 we will get 3915 means this much of securities marketable securities should be sold and when we sell what happens we get cash so when we get cash the balance from 4000 4000 plus this amount will again reach to the return point so in essence what happens the cash balance meanders it moves between the maximum and the lower whenever the lower point reaches, we sell securities the return point comes if cash flow you know cash keeps coming in and going out if the cash flow is so much that from return point the maximum balance starts touching 15,745 what we do we purchase marketable securities so bring this balance down to return point how much we purchase 7830 so guys I hope you have understood the application of Miller or model simply in your organization you need to see you need to decide what should be the minimum balance ideally it should not be kept at zero it should be above zero to some safety level here I've just assumed 4000 depending on the size of the organization the minimum balance can be decided by the top management then next is variance of daily cash flow yes you've been operating for a long time you would know what is the variance of cash flows that is not an issue standard deviation can also be you know that is the under root of that basically then transaction cost obviously you have a history of buying and selling marketable securities so you will know every time you buy or sell what is the cost you incur and then the interest rate that can be picked from bank that's not an issue and then once you have all the ingredients plug them into the formula we have for spread spread as I told you already it's the difference between the maximum and the lower the upper and the lower levels so we need to understand how do we set the spread if the daily variability of cash flows and the transaction cost is very high we keep a wider spread if the interest rate is high we keep a closer spread another important things we need to understand is in order to keep the holding cost of cash low return point is kept as one third of spread which is the difference between the upper and the lower limit if you have any question relating to Miller or model or cash management working capital feel free to leave a comment I will reply to you as usual thank you so very much for your precious time